Hello, you've reached Philip Ward. I just want to thank you for giving me a call and being a part of this project. Feel free to say whatever you'd like. Thanks. Um, I don't feel like giving the name. Um, actually, I will. My name is Roman. I was three years sober off stands. And, you know, we all have our slip ups. But, um, I just feel like shit. My closest friend, I'm not gonna give out a name. Um, there's also three years that we shared, like, same time. So I just feel like shit. I'm not telling him that I slipped up. Um. <clears throat> this is so awkward. I'm sick right now, so I can't talk. But I love him. Okay, bye. <laughs> what the hell? This is so weird. It's currently 5 p.m. on a... I don't even know what day it is. Uh... Wednesday, and I'm so high, like I always am, but, uh, currently, like, I don't know what to talk about, this is so awkward, uh, well, thing about voice girls is that it's like, oh my god, this is so bad. I don't even like want to sing this. Alright, so Life's been kind of sucky recently, not gonna lie, you know. I'm like, in my fourth month out of school now. Um, I should still be studying, but because I'm a dumbass, that didn't work out. Have no motivation to work. Bank account kind of got sucked over. Lost the money, almost broke, but that's not even the worst part. The worst part is I've just been so, like, all over the place. Like, life just literally was, I don't even know, dude, like, it's like you say that, hey, I'm not feeling normal, and then, like, what do you, like, I can't even think normal, I can't even eat normally, I can't even get up normally, I can't even look in the mirror normally, and then everyone's like, oh, no, yeah, same, oh, so I guess that's normal, right? But, like, I feel like I'm drowning, bro, and, like, I know I'm not alone, but it feels like it. That's all. Have a good day. Cheers. Hey, Mom. I just wanted to say that I love you, but you fucked me up. You fucked me up as a child, as a teenager, and even as an adult. And although I love you, I don't think I can ever forgive you for that. And I'm sorry that you had to go through what you did, but that doesn't mean you had to put me through the same hell. Hey, Philip. Um, this is probably just going to be a lot of nonsense. I just saw your video. It's uh, it's really cool of you to do that. I had a guy... Um, assault me pretty bad a few years ago named Philip, and I haven't been able to say the name without crying. But, uh, your name gives us a new meaning. So, I think that's really cool. Um, I'm struggling with my sobriety right now. Pretty bad. I don't know why. I a lot going on. But, um, I keep reminding myself that things are, they're gonna get better. 
they're going to be okay. And uh, currently outside in like 30 degree weather, staring at the moon and stars, and everything feels like it'll be better. So I really hope that it is. Um, if you haven't been told it lately, I love you. And I think you're really great for doing this. Um, so thank you. And maybe one day our paths will cross and we can be homies or something, man. I hope you have a really great life. All right. Bye. I fall in love with people way too easily and I don't know why. I mean, I do know why. It's just I don't know why people can't fall in love with me just as easily. The way I process emotional and mental pain is fucking exhausting. I'll distance myself from everyone. I'll leave for days and I stop drinking water. And I'm really trying to be strong, but you know, people think that all life that all that life is good for is love when we have different things to do. But I'm so lonely. Hi, Philip. Um, so I feel really, really lonely. Um, I feel like it doesn't matter how hard I try. And as a 21 year old in college and four years in college, it's, um, somehow I just can't always make friends. And it makes me sad to think about all of my friends that go out or people I know that go out and I'm never one of them never get invited to do it and it's just been so exhausting having to be the one to make the first move in all of my friendships. I just thought I should tell someone that. Thank you. Hi, Philip. Today is my 38th birthday and I'm dealing with a nasty cold. I'm pretty bummed out. I shut my notifications off on Facebook. Well, the reminders really to remind people that today was my birthday, just to see how many people who I've known for over a decade would remember that it's my birthday. And when you know it, out of the 400 acquaintances, friends, and family members on Facebook, three of them remembered me today when I've gone out of my way in life to remember them and make them some special. I'm pretty down. I hope life is being amazing to you. Thanks for giving me the availability and the place to vent. Hey, um, I just thought I'd give you a call and say I hope that you're having a super great day and your next day is even better. Okay, bye. Um, I just left a voicemail before. Um, for Zach, uh, there's one thing I forgot, um, I'm letting you go, and I hope maybe our paths will cross again, uh, when we know ourselves a little bit better, I don't know, Just, I hope we can speak someday. And I hope you know how much I loved you. I know how much we loved each other. Um, hi. I am currently in, in Atlanta, Georgia. I am a flight attendant. I know a lot of people travel for the holidays and they are going to see family and friends, maybe heading back home after seeing family. I am doing quite the opposite. I am the person that gets you there. Um, I know that our career is somewhat glamorized and it's wonderful. I love my job and it's 
it's the best. I love seeing people reunite and getting them to where they're going. And I know people are so thankful for us to be there. And, you know, sometimes I feel like our job is forgotten about. We look like we're the person who just sells the Coke and or serves the Coke and tells people to put their seatbelts on in the most annoying time. But, you know, at the same time, we are people as well. And I'm sad during the holidays. It's, I'm here alone in a hotel room, flight canceled, back to where I need to be in the morning. And I know that's probably really inconvenient for the hundreds and something people on that plane. Um, but I just would like you and others to know anonymously that we're people as well and we're so sorry and you know, just be kind and remember that everyone you interact with has a story. And I'm so happy everyone gets to be home for the holidays if their flight isn't canceled. So, anyways, have a Merry Christmas. Hey, anybody who hears this, I have... One thing to say, take that next step. Call me back. Hi, Philip. You know, I kind of was like gonna leave a really sad message, but I think I'm gonna leave a happy one. My name is Cam, I'm a senior in high school and I am in my last semester of high school, the same school I've gone to for 12 years, and I'm really good. I'm really happy. I have a family that I love. I mean, I've had my moments. I don't have a dad, and that's okay. I have the best mom. I have the best sister, the best brothers, and I'm doing okay, and I'm learning how... I don't have to be friends with everyone. I don't have to have a best friend. I don't have to have a friend group. I don't know. I'm just, I'm really happy. And I I might cry, but I haven't said that so, really feeling that in so long. Six years since my dad left. I don't know. I just, I'm really happy. Everything is working out. And, you know, I fully expect there's going to be some more bad days, and that's okay. I'll, I might get down and gloomy again, but I just I have full faith that I'll be able to get right back up. So I don't know if you needed to hear this, Mr. Philip Ward, or someone who hears this through your, one of your projects that you use this for, but I hope it's some encouragement that... It took six years for me to be able to say confidently that I'm happy. So, kind of tough, but I don't know. It's also kind of hopeful. Six years in the scheme of things isn't that bad. Have a good life, Mr. Ward. See ya. Probably never. Um, I was with someone for four years, and I thought I was going to get married to this person, and last year in November of 2022, I found out that he was cheating on me, um, And one of the people he was cheating on me with was his boss. There was, like, multiple other people, but it just left me heartbroken and sad. And I'm really trying so hard to, like, be positive and move on, but I was so in love with this person. And it sucks, but I'm trying to go into the new year with a new perspective and just loving myself rather than someone else and investing all that time into myself. And 
you know, I wish I could change what happened, but I can't. Um, and I think I just really, really needed to get it off my chest. So I'm happy. I'm happy I was able to do that. But I'm moving on. I'm healing. Um, and just, yeah, thank you so much. I broke up with my ex in 2019, February, after moving in with him. It is December 2022. He has a kid now. He cheated and got the girl pregnant, and that's why we weren't together anymore, but I still miss him. Maybe one day we'll bump into each other. And maybe I'll be moved on for them, but I still miss them. Dearly. Hey, my name's Mia. Um, I just recently got out of a relationship a month ago. And it is so hard to get back out there because every single person I see I'm automatically comparing it back to him and I just wonder when that might happen when that comparison ends it's just so odd to me how how much we connect with people so quickly and then that connection just gets cut off and it still lingers. You still see that person everywhere you go. Every day. It's so bizarre to me. Um, but yeah. People are weird. The world is weird. Our minds are weird. But I always feel have faith in the universe and the energy. Okay. Why are you trying so hard to fit in? You were born to stand out. Lately, it's been really hard to believe that I'll find love. Um, all my friends around me are getting in relationships, getting engaged, getting married, and, um, sometimes it's hard to think that there's hope for me. I know love isn't everything in life, but it is a desire that I'm honestly scared that won't be fulfilled. And I fear about it every day, um, but still trusting that God will send me someone when it's time. Hey, Philip. What's funnier than 24? 25. <laughs> um, so I just had one of the worst years. Um, of my life, I, the beginning of my school year, I started my junior year, um, and I guess this was in 2021, but the beginning of last school year was my junior year, and on the fourth day of school, one of my best friends um, passed away after she gave birth to her son, um, and that was really hard, and I got really depressed, and I started just up in my schoolwork, and I started to not care about a lot of things anymore, and I didn't go out with my friends, and I didn't do anything, really, um, my whole junior year. And um, then I met a really good group of friends um, in March of last year, or in March of 2022, I guess. 
and um, we became really close, and now they're some of my best friends, and um, yeah, I told them everything, and it really got me through a depressing time in my life, and I'm just, like, really stressed out with college decisions and everything, and I'm choosing between really far, a really far away college from my house and a college that's about an hour away. So, yeah, um, I just want to say that, like, grief is something that you can let consume you or you can choose to live with the memories and try to do what they would think is the best for you. That's something that I've had to learn. And it's been really hard. Um, but, yeah, I just think about what my friend Maddie would do. And she was the kindest um, person that I've ever met. Um, Maddie could light up a room with her smile. And she truly was selfless to everyone. And she was extremely kind to me um, throughout all this time that I knew her, even if we weren't super close to end. The one thing that she wanted to do in life was be a mom, and she got to be a mom for the last month of her life. And I just want everyone to know to live like Maddie and live in kindness and love and compassion towards people because you never know what someone's going through. And hang in there because it does get better. So remember to live like Maddie. Bye. Hi, it's me, and it's 7 a.m. in the morning, and it's about negative 2 degrees outside. And voicemails make me really nervous. <laughs> um, actually, I think voicemails haunted me for the past year. I got over 250 voicemails, and they're all longer than three minutes or three minutes and I never got to say anything back to you and I'd just like to say that you're a narcissist you know that you're a bad person but I don't think you apologize for any of the right things out of all those 250 messages So, uh, <laughs> I hope to see you never again, and this year I'd like to go outside and make a lot of art. That's all I want to do, is literally go outside and make a lot of art and share it with the world. And bye, and good luck on your project. I'm a 25-year-old stay-at-home mom who's married, who has two kids, whose life has been hell. I was grown up. I grew up in the system. I didn't really have a family to call my own. My life seems like a complete lie, but in all reality, it made me who I am. At the age of five, my aunt has no. stripped off me and my younger sister to a complete and different state because she was wanting to speak with my dad. My dad told her no. And during those years that I lived in another state, I was sexually abused. I was molested by someone who I called Grandpa. I was physically abused, mentally. Anything that a child doesn't need to go through is what I was put through. I think the reason why they got rid of me at the age of 11 is because I was getting old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. I am still alive today. I've thought about taking my life multiple times, but I haven't, and I don't want to. But just know your worth at the end of the day. No matter what shit you went through, it will get better. Y'all stay blessed. Hi. Um, you know what? Never mind. Hey, Philip. I, um, I just made some hot chocolate. You know, you and I haven't really talked in a while. Um, I don't even know if you remember me. But, um, I wanted to pop in and say hi. 
Um, how have you been? I can't really talk back, but it is nice to, uh, to pretend. And do you, do you remember how my mom used to make me go to math every single day? She changed it to just a week now. Um, so I get to go to math every week. And I'm still just as bad as math as I used to be, and I still cheat on all of my tests, and I still suck at school. But she's got me started on Prozac. Life's getting better. I have new friends. I have new hopes, new dreams. I even have a new bird. I don't, you probably don't remember her, Peach, but, um, Peach passed away a little while ago. We have Casper now. Um, she's lovely, but, um, I just wanted to check up on you, see how you're doing. You don't have to reply to this. It's just, just nice to talk to someone again. Hey, Dad. I just wanted to let you know that I used to be someone I really didn't like. Uh, Not only physically, but also my personality was not very attractive towards people in the sense of not fitting in. Uh, But I worked on myself for like a year and physically and mentally became the person. Not that I wanted to be, but a hell of a lot closer than where I once was. And I met this girl named Anna. And she was cool. Um, I got her Snapchat. And I asked her out. And being the social butterfly, yet also at the exact same same time awkward guy was um like at the end of the first night we were hanging out I was like asked her to be in a relationship with me and she agreed took her to homecoming the following Saturday and then she broke up with me um and it was very hard on me and looking back it wasn't even the fact that like she left me it was just the feeling of working on myself for like a year that it felt as if it had all gotten voided. It felt like I had done all of it for no reason. It felt like all the progress I had made was reset back to day one, almost. And we haven't talked in a while. And I think she unadded me on Snapchat. But we still have each other's phone numbers and like follow each other on Instagram. But we're no longer in speaking terms. But we're doing good now. Gonna bench 225 this year. All that matters. I found myself. Goodbye. I love you. Um... I just watched your TikTok video, and that is unbelievably awesome. So I would just like to say hi to my brother. Um, It's been two years since you've been gone, and I would like to say I'm graduating from you. Yay! You never got to me, so that's what my goal for this year is. Finish high school. Make it till I'm 18. And hopefully graduate college. I mean, it's something you never would have been able to do, but I'm glad I'm going to do it in honor of your name. Thank you. And thank you for the word for letting me share my message. Bye. A year ago, my fiancé's dad died. And... The day before we got engaged, I had a dream telling me that 
he was going to propose. I, I think I'm scared to know what my fiancé will feel like on our wedding day. And hopefully his grandma can be there, his dad's mom, Betty. Reminds me of my grandma. And she's a He saves her voice notes on his phone. And I'm sure he's never going to hear this, but Travis, I love you. And just know that dad is always with us. And he's going to be there. And... I can't wait to marry you. I love you. The mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages at this time.